forests, but also the wildlife. We do patrols in the protected area where guards always go and ensure that the, those areas are very, very well protected and safe. But besides that, there are first of all the, what we call the tourism protocols that we apply when we are taking these visitors into the park. When visitors are coming to the park, we ensure that these visitors are there into the protocols and they are tested to ensure that they do not have any illness that they can transmit or affect our wildlife in the protected area. And then two, we also provide them with the protective wear, such as the masks. They also sanitize themselves before they enter into the protected area. This helps us to mitigate the hellish impacts of human beings to wildlife, but also wildlife into the human beings. And then while they are in the park with the gorillas, they are ensured that they maintain the distance that is recommended, uh, the distance 10 meters, for them not to reach closer to the wildlife such as gorillas. Since gorillas share almost 98% of the DNA, so they can contract diseases from human beings, but also human beings can contract diseases from this wildlife. So we ensure that our visitors are well briefed so that they don't uh, cause harm to this key species that we have in, in Buindi here. The Uganda Wildlife Authority has what we call the strategic plan. And this strategic plan guides us in the management of this protected area. And a number of uh, efforts are drawn from this strategic plan to ensure that we do not uh, divert from what is planned. Number one is that we have a programs that we are implementing in the protected area, such as Buindi. Among them is the uh, operations or patrols. We have realized that the efforts for patrols have been increasing for quite long now, since uh, the time we started documenting these, uh, these efforts. So patrols are being conducted in all parts of the park to ensure that we mitigate the illegal activities that could affect the conservation. The other effort is the conservation awareness. We have been promoting uh, Buhindi to sensitize communities to appreciate the importance of this resource in this area. So awareness programs are ongoing and we have been doing them in various ways. There are meetings that we conduct with communities to sensitize them on what should be done in order to ensure the conservation of this protected area. We also do the online sensitization such as radio talk shows to sensitize the communities. But besides that, we also ensure that communities benefit so that they can appreciate the importance of Buindi. We do monitor this uh, uh, wildlife that exists in this protected area. For example, we have a full, fully fledged department of ecological monitoring and also research. This department is a, a charged of generating information that supports management to take decisions. So those are some of the efforts that we have taken to make sure that Buindi exists for the generations and generations. A human wildlife conflict is one of the challenges that actually management in protected areas face. And in Buindi here, we have some species that normally come out to disturb communities, damage the crops, but also we have put their efforts to address this. Number one is that we work with the communities on the frontline villages to help us manage this wildlife that come out. Now we have recruited a group called Hugo, Hugo Human Gorilla Management Groups. These groups are in most of the prote uh, villages that are surrounding the protected area. They monitor any wildlife that comes out, but help us to push it back before they go and cause a lot of harm. The other one is that we have also established what we call the unpalatable crops, the buffer crops that are cultivated along the park, such as tea. Tea is an unpalatable crop, but is a high value crop also that can earn communities a living, but at the same time helps us to mitigate the human wildlife conflicts. The other one is that we have also put some uh, Mauritius stone hedge along the park boundary to mitigate this wildlife that would cross from the park outside. 
So we work hand in hand with partners, but together also with the communities to ensure that the species that would cause damage to human beings, uh, property, are controlled in time before they cause a higher damage. The other effort that the government has put is that they have put in a policy for uh, for compensation. And uh, whoever is affected outside there, they, we normally assess the damages, but also help those communities to document the, what has been damaged and submit these reports to the government for the compensation so that they will not lose it for nothing. But their efforts should be realized and they are uh, reimbursed. There are a number of species, not only mountain gorillas. Of course, Buindi is one of the area that harbors around 50% of the gorilla mountain gorillas in the greater Virunga landscape. But there are other species that are of key importance. We have the, East Afri the eastern chimpanzees that exist in this park in large number, though not habituated, but they exist in the wilderness. We also have the elephants in this wind here. We have uh, other monkeys, such as the lowest monkeys, the red-tailed monkeys, and the uh, blue monkeys. We also have uh, antelopes, such as the dikas. So this forest has a number of species that are of conservation. That's what was part of the tourism, and we also have bird watching as part of the tourism activities here. So, Buindi is not only for gorillas, but is a good habitat to the greater uh, Virunga landscape uh, biodiversity. Poaching, we handle poaching in various tools ways. One is, of course, uh, surveillance. We have first to do surveillance in the protected area to ensure that the areas that are prone to poaching are actually patrolled to mitigate these people who go in. But the other key effort that we are using these days as management is sensitization. These communities are always followed up outside there and they are sensitized so that they can appreciate why they should not go into the park to poach. The success stories of Buindi are actually higher. One is that we are realizing an increase of the gorilla population in Buindi. That is one of the success stories that I can tell you. In 2018, we did what we call the gorilla census in Buindi here and it gave us uh, 459 individual gorillas. But as I'm speaking now, in the groups that are habituated only, we have realized an increase of around 110 in newborn gorillas. That is a very good success story for Buindi uh, as a national park. The other one is that um, we are working closely with partners that are supporting conservation, such as the tourism companies, the hotelians, UTB, IGCP, the Greater Virunga Landscape, all these guys are part and partial of the conservation of Buindi. And that is what is, makes Buindi proud because we have the partners that love conservation and uh, made, made us proud to ensure that the resources are well managed. Um, of course, the other success story that I can say is that we are documenting a decrease in illegal activities in Buindi here. Of course, the other one is that we are also registering increase in the number of tourists. You know, COVID-19 when it came, it brought us almost to zero. But as I'm speaking now, the tourists have increased and we are realizing still a higher increase every day. And then, of course, there are other challenges uh, uh, that we also encounter the impact of climate change is one of the challenges that I could also register. We are realizing that the prolonged drought drought is also coming in and we are realizing now uh, increasing incidences of wildfires in some parts of the protected area. Implementation of some activities is quite challenging because we don't have enough budget to address uh, those kind of uh, 
activities that are very paramount for the conservation of this area. I appeal to governments to, to look at Buindi as one of the areas that they should put effort. For example, the roads leading to Buindi are not good. And this could be the area that the government would have put an effort to ensure that the road is coming here as the only cash cow for the government would have been tamed up to the park. And then the other one is, of course, uh, as the government is talking about paying scientists highly, why not also consider the poor people? Because they're scientists. These are people who are doing great work in the field, ensuring the natural resources exist for the future generation. So they should also actually be appreciated and their salary also enhanced, just like they are doing for others. That's my advice to the government. To my people who are watching outside there, Buindi is a wonderful place to visit. If you have never seen a gorilla, please come here to Buindi and you will be able to see the gorilla. Um, I'm by the names of Akampura Osbat, uh, currently working as an assistant head guide, uh, Bohoma, and uh, under Buindi Impenetrable National Park. Uh, in, uh, we always come early in the morning at 7 o'clock, uh, then we receive visitors, uh, they, we check their permits, and uh, then uh, after checking the permits, uh, we take them to the briefing center, then uh, we, 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 we call the women, we have the community, me com community members, so when it reaches uh, 7.30, then those community members come and then entertain visitors. And uh, as they are entertaining visitors, uh, we have uh, a head guide can be handling the distribution of visitors because he has to distribute them in two groups. And uh, uh, currently uh, here in Bohoma, we have seven groups. So we distribute them according to the gorilla groups. Then after that, as the entertainment is going on, when it reaches 8 o'clock, then uh, we, if we get one of the guides, ranger guides, then he, he talks about Bindi briefly, then also the head guide comes in after, after, after the short briefing, then the, the head guide uh, distribute, di distributes groups, like we have Habinyanja Gorilla Group, we have Rushegura Gorilla Group, then after visas knowing which group they are going to, then there are some groups which start from the Vista Center. Then there are other groups where, they, where we have to drive. So after that, then we give them those groups. Then they start uh, hiking or others start driving. Then they go to gorillas, where the locations of gorillas can be uh, found. So habituation, it means uh, making a gorilla group which is not used to people, and then it gets accustomed to human beings. So when we are habituating a, a gorilla group, we have to keep on visiting it every day. Then you try to imitate, you try to do what they are doing, like if they are feeding on leaves, then you also try to pretend as if you are also eating leaves. And then as time goes on, uh, after two or three years, then that's when the gorillas can, be, uh, can know that these people are not an enemy or are not a threat to us. And then they start coming out of the thickets. So when they start coming out of the, th out of the thickets, then we, shall, we can know that this family is completely used to people. Uh, where we are standing now, uh, this is the grave of Rondeza, and uh, it is one of the, it was the silverback of the first gorilla family to be habituated in Bwindi. So this is the grave where we, where we buried him. And uh, so we still, we had to put this grave so that we keep on uh, memorizing because he was the first silverback to be habituated in Bwindi. Uh, we are in Bwindi, Impenetrable National Park, and uh, I would urge people to, all, to come and visit Bwindi because uh, most of the people in Uganda, most of them don't know gorillas. So if you come here in Bwindi, you can enjoy a lot. I'm John Justin Oklai the assistant to an investigation uh, in the Mogahinga conservation area and uh, purposely I do a lot I major in investigation and uh, from here what I normally do my duties uh, I make sure that uh, 
I investigate in and out uh, the wildlife cases, uh, especially in relation to poaching and also other complicated cases you may find out maybe from the local resident I will also uh, also I do uh, also involve myself in uh, investigating uh, disciplinary uh, uh, staff uh, whereby you may find out that uh, maybe like on the, uh, our staffs are having a misconduct so I have to come in I also make sure that uh, I do uh, visit the scene of crimes I also make sure that uh, I do the compilation of the files and uh, in liaison with the, the police officers and uh, also the, the sister forces like the UPDFs and, uh, and also maybe like the international uh, border bureau officers. In most cases, uh, me as an investigator, we do hand in hand in this job where you find out that uh, uh, we have to make sure that we alliance with the prosecution team, uh, we alliance with the police officers, we alliance with uh, uh, also other rangers, especially the, our, uh, uh, our field rangers who may be in, who always normally go for these uh, field or, or duties and they do a lot of uh, maybe like the arrest. So it, this is all about the collective responsibilities that we normally do. It is not me as, a, as an investigator or the team leader investigation who do it alone, but uh, we just do it as a joint effort to make sure that each and everything is, is, is in line. In most cases, uh, we have uh, the illegal uh, possession of wildlife products and species whereby you find out that uh, most of these people, you may find it is, uh, they, are all, they are so much more interested in this wildlife species like the meat. And also, uh, though it is of here in Ibuendi, there are few cases where you find out that maybe the, the locals are hunting for ivory. But I, that one, I can't roll it out. But uh, so far, so good. I haven't uh, re reported such kind of cases where you find out that poachers have been arrested uh, because of this, unless if it is being transported from somewhere else to this site. We are totally very safe in a sense that uh, we have made uh, a massive deployment of the, our forces right away from, uh, from where the tourists are picked from, especially if they're on a flight and also even uh, as they are coming. We have made the, a massive deployment all our way along up to Bindi. And by the time when they are here, we always, it is our duty to make sure that we always deploy them, our, our, our staffs, they move with them in the field, each and every vehicle. And if at all they are moving like vehicles, moving in a group, we normally make sure that we deploy our staffs, move in front and also behind to make sure that the security of our clients is really guaranteed. And also at the lodges where they sleep, we normally have to make sure that we deploy them. We have here the, 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 the police officers who are also entitled to, 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 to ensure that there is a security in some of these lodges. Because uh, this is what we have been discussing with them, with the lodge managers, and also uh, together with us and also other forces like the UPDFs, as we do hand in hand as a collective responsibility. Uh, Chance Joseph is my name and uh, I'm a community conservation ranger for Bindi Impenetral National Park based here at Bohoma Park headquarters. Normally community conservation is a broad term uh, to describe the programs and activities that involves interaction with frontline communities. And uh, among these programs we have uh, conservation education programs, uh, we have revenue sharing programs, we have uh, collaborative uh, resource management programs, among others. And uh, one of uh, our goal is to increase community support for conservation. Uh, community conservation uh, is done in so many ways. So for example, community conservation is done through the meetings, uh, lectures, uh, workshops, uh, drama. Uh, we also conduct it through the, uh, the through on air. 
we go on radio programs, then we also sensitize the communities. And uh, among our core activities, uh, we do uh, we do mobilize communities to participate uh, in wildlife conservation programs. Here in Brindi, uh, we have so many community projects ranging from vulnerable communities, these are the Batwa, uh, the women, women, elderly, the youth, and men. So like here you see around, we have so many projects. Uh, for example, we have like, this is the Rustu Africa. Uh, this is a group of men and women. They do basketry. We, they also have a chance of coming inside the park. They entertain visitors uh, when they are going for tracking. Uh, they also engage in other crafts. So uh, we also have here uh, the battle projects, which are also here. Uh, these, these groups is, have been facilitated and supported economically. Uh, most of them from NGOs and other conservation agencies. Uh, in other sectors, we also have a big number of community engagements that range from 1 to 10. I do prefer this gorilla because I grew up from the gorilla community and then we were informed that we should do conservation. So as I was inspired about the gorillas as my sources of inspiration to always, always draw and come up with, they really inspired me because of the humanness of a gorilla. Usually when I look at the, uh, I've grown up within this community and then when I look at the gorillas, they really have the characters of human beings. So it really made me get inspired and I was like, I can keep on drawing them as I inform people about conservation. Thank you so much. Hey, how are you? Oh, wow. Chance Joseph is my name. I'm happy to meet you. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? We are doing well. How do you make these crafts? Mm. We are the one sum of our items. We are the one who make it, especially like baskets and um, power, wood bowers. Mm. Also table mats here, wow. but some. Yeah. Okay, so where do you get the materials? Uh, we are looking some gra grasses and the, if you know the papyrus, yeah, we have here some materials. Hello, hello, how are you? Hi. Yes, Monique. Welcome. How are you? Hi. Okay. Hi. We are trying. Yeah, I see you have the crafts. How are you making? Ah, we make crafts here. We weave baskets. We... We make, we make the aprons, we make the toilet bags, we make the necklaces from papers. So, not that we make all, but there is some that we make here. How are you making these crafts? Uh, this one, they are made out of wood. Uh, the initial color, this is the original color of the wood. I look for a banga and different sets of kizos. U-shaped kizo, V-shaped kizo, and some flat kizo. And the machieta panga to, to make it. After carving, the V-shaped kizo makes these lines which appear like hair or fur. And again, if I am to make a, a silver bar like this, I get a kizo and peel part of the bar. So this is the, the finished silver bar. So on this stage, uh, I dip it in a black uh, leather dye. Then I add soup, soup polish, the black soup cream, to get like this color, how it looks. So if I want to make a silver bar, I do the back like this.